Hello. So now we are going to the dreaded double loop example. And it doesn't have to be dreaded as much as if you know the basic principles of Kirchhoff's laws. You start simple and you go to the more, add more layers to it, and you attack it one step at a time. You can handle something like this, okay? And think, note that uh, actual circuits, even in the tablet I'm using right now, in your smartphone, in your laptop, in any uh, device that involves uh, circuitry, involves something way more complicated than this. So just, once again, this is still technically a basic example, okay? So let's see what we're given here. We're just going to set up the equations for both the junction rule and find out which direction the currents are going as posed by this question. And we're going to set up the equations for both loops. We're going to call this loop 1 and loop 2. Okay, you ready? Let's do it. Um, so first, let's see what we're given. We're given two batteries. Okay, they're both pointing opposite ways. And uh, we have three resistors. Resistor 3 is in the middle uh, for some reason, but that is okay. Now, based on just the directions of the batteries alone, I know that the voltage, or the current rather, is going to flow that way for E2 and that way for E1. So following the directions of that, here I, know, I can see the direction that current in I1 is going to flow, it's going to flow down. And following this direction here, I know this is also going to flow down. So what's going to happen for E3? Well, no, just take a look at this. If I follow this direction here and follow that direction there, it has to meet there. It can't go anywhere else but up from our perspective at least. I know I3 is going up. Boom. Simple as that. Okay, I hope that uh, is not too complicated. You can rewind to see how I did that earlier on. Um, and from here, I can use the fact that um, I1 is going that way and I2 going this way uh, for a junction rule. Now take note, we have two junctions here um, and we can use um, which ju either junction uh, to form our ju uh, current equation, but I'm going to use the bottom one. Okay, so for our junction rule, I am going to use the junction on the bottom. Okay, and remember what the junction rule says is that the current coming in, current coming out. Okay, good rule of life, garbage in, garbage out. So we analyze this and take a look. Which ones are going in? Well, I2 and I1 are going into this junction, and I3 is actually going out. So it's simple as that. Pretty much we're already done. Um, I1 and I2 are going in. It's going out to I3. So if you're solving for something like current here, or the potential difference across each resistor or something like that, then this is one piece of information that you will need. So take that and save. Um, so now we're going to go directly into the loop rule. And remember, I labeled this as loop one and loop two. So don't get loopy, okay? Follow along. And um, so let me see if I can divide this into two spaces. And I'm going to use the formula that I am used to, um, where the sum of all the potential drops in that loop should equal to zero. So for our loop one, um, I have to choose a direction. So it's important you have to choose a direction first. So it looks like everything is going, what direction is that? That is actually counterclockwise. OK, so let me erase that. Choose green for R. Okay, so this is C C W. How about this one? Let's go like that. Oops. Okay, so which direction is this going? It's actually going the opposite. Okay. 
Oops, that's an ugly loop. It's going in the clockwise direction. Okay, so this is actually a really good example. Okay, let's try to analyze that. I have to flip back and forth to see what's going on here. You can choose any point to start with. Like I can choose to start here, there, there, there. It, obviously, it's easy to start in a place that is more convenient. Um, uh, let's just go ahead and start um, here, I guess, and just follow along here and going counterclockwise and if I'm going with the direction of the current and it's a resistor that means it's still a voltage what rise or drop okay well you can't hear you it's a video so it's still a drop so it's still minus um, and it's across uh, resistor 3 so it's I3 R3 Presented of Ohm's law. And then as it goes across the battery, we're going the same direction as the battery. And so that is a plus. Plus E1. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a plus here. Here it's going to be a minus I1. I don't know if you can see that I. Let's erase that. The voltage drop is minus I1R1. Here it's minus I3, R3. Okay, we'll see if that's the same thing for loop two. Okay, and then I'm going across resistor one in the same direction, but it results, it uses up electric potential energy. So once again, that is a drop. Okay, but all of that is equal to zero, a grade you do not want. And so I'm going to take some liberty and just move these to the other side and take note when you do that, instead of negative, they become positive. Okay, so the only thing left behind is E1 is equal to um, I3 R3 plus I1 R1. And actually that's as much you can do there. Okay, so save now in the problem like this hopefully something like uh, the voltage the EMF from uh, battery one is provided okay and uh, resistances hopefully are provided usually you're asked to solve for the the currents in this case so watch out for our future video okay uh, I forgot to label these so let's label this uh, loop one and this is loop number two so let's go ahead and do loop number two so for loop number two we're actually going clockwise so I can start in that same corner if I wanted to and if I go here clockwise um, you notice I'm still going the same direction as the current and um, R3, so that's still going to be a voltage drop. Almost looks quite similar to my other equation. And as I go across the battery, I'm still going the same way, but the battery supplies up potential energy, electric potential energy, so that is a plus. So if you notice, it's easier when you think of it on is it using up energy or is it uh, adding or supplying energy is it a sink or is it a source okay is it a, a user or is it a giver and since I'm going clockwise you notice I'm going the same way as the current in R2 but since resistors use up electrical potential energy it's still a voltage drop oddly enough and it's still equal to zero it looks like the same equation from the other term but uh, it there has to be something different and you can tell the difference if you haven't already caught it already oh, wait that's not E1 we're talking about the second battery there you go so there is an immediately a difference you can tell and this is now positive and I move it to the other side 
okay and what this does it gives you another piece of information so we have equation one we have number two and number three and if you have three unknowns and you have three equations um, that means if your number of equations matches your unknown, that means this is solvable. Okay, that means you can actually converge this. It may involve a little bit of algebra in substituting one equation to another, but it is possible. Okay, I'll try to show an example of that in a future video. We're going to stop here for now. Hope that was uh, clear enough. Take a look back, rewind as you wish, and I hope you all enjoyed.